Well, I'm going to do a little play-by-play -play here and turn a calabash. There is a gourd. I'm not sure if it's a calabash gourd or not. And there's a picture of Coco and me on a log. That one never gets old. Anyway, I'm going to turn a calabash. And it is also called the bottle gourd. And it is cultivated all around the world in tropical and subtropical areas. But it is believed to have spread from southern Africa. Well, and there is a picture of my finished calabash, the outside and the inside. Very nice uh, piece of box elder burl. Okay, I'm loading this piece onto a screw chuck. Be very careful if you try this. It doesn't work too badly. Anyway, I slowed my lathe down, turned it off, and I'm going to tighten that up by hand to continue the process. And I'm not going to bring up my tailstock. I've got that uh, screw chuck embedded about an inch and a half into that block of wood, and it's not going to go anyplace, and it doesn't. So I'm taking a large bowl gouge with swept back wings, and I'm just uh, kind of leveling off that surface right there. And that's where I'm going to put my spigot. And I'll mark that in just a second. Clean up that surface. And then later on, oh, here I'm marking the, the spigot with a pencil and a caliper. And I'm going to put this into a Vicmark chuck with uh, two inch jaws. They're very hefty and they work really well for something this size. So there's my marks, and uh, one of those is correct, and the other one isn't. So we'll we'll find out which one that is later on. So I'm finishing up the uh, the outside edge of this big bowl blank. I just like to start with a surface that's clean and trued up on the bottom and the side. Okay, so here I'm just doing a push cut across the side of the calabash. Truing that up. This is fairly wet wood. It's not extremely wet. It's been sitting there for a year or so. But I'm getting some very nice shavings off this. You can see collecting on my arm right there. Now I'm going to work my way around the bottom corner of my bowl. And eventually I'll turn a spigot on there. And then further on at the end of the video I'll put this calabash bowl into a jam chuck take the spigot off and the bottom will be completely flat, a little bit rounded, but I'm certainly not going to put a foot on this sort of a bowl. It needs to be a little bit natural and organic. Here I'm just doing a kind of a draw cut, rounding off that surface, taking off a little bit of wood as I go. Got the camera angle changed a little bit, and I'm going to try, I think, in just a second to do a push cut as I go around the corner of the bottom of this bowl. I need to take a little bit of wood off there to get the spigot exposed so I can uh, do a little bit of detail on it, which I'm doing right here. So I'm using a quarter inch spindle gouge. I believe this is a Cindy Drozda tool I get from Packard. And it's just the right size to get into this spigot and kind of uh, make that dovetail pattern. It'll fit into my chuck jaws. Now I'm using two cameras and I've got a split view showing a couple different angles of this. And I can see that I'm gonna have to move my tool rest pretty quickly as I work my way around that bottom corner of that bowl. I'm using a 3 8 inch bowl gouge with swept back wings right now. And I like to experiment and play around with different tools as I'm turning something and just see how they operate and perform. And back to my uh, my little detail gouge, fine-tuning that spigot. There, I'm moving the tool rest finally. And that's important, uh, offering some support 
for my tool as I work my way around there. Now I'm working on the very top edge of that just a little bit. You can't see exactly what I'm doing, but to have a true to have a true calabash shape, I need to turn the rim inward and kind of make it more of a closed shape. Now here's another view of my bowl that's finished. What a beautiful piece of wood. Now I'm doing a little bit of that Fibonacci golden mean calculating right here with my measuring device and I'm gonna kind of find the high point of the outside of my bowl. I'm gonna mark that and I'm gonna turn the rim and the base of that up to that point that I'm uh, drawing on with a pencil right here. And I'll just make that curve into the rim and down into the bottom corner of that bowl. Now I'm just doing a little push cut here. Now I am going in the correct direction. Here I'm not when I'm doing that draw cut, but I was doing a push cut into the rim and that was correct. And from the bottom of the bowl, I need to go in this direction as I'm doing right here with my smaller bowl gouge. Now I got to get the bigger one out. Probably need to take off a little bit more material. So I'm using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, but I'm doing a push cut here. And it's important to practice. Push cuts aren't all that easy. But I also like to do a little sheer scraping as I'm doing right here. And you can tell by the shavings I'm getting that it's more of a shearing cut with my flute pretty much closed as I work around that corner down there. There's a better view of the profile of my bowl developing as I go around that corner. And if you look at the very top of that, you can see that push cut I'm doing right here, taking off some wood. And I need to blend that in to make a fair curve, as they say. Box Elder is in the maple family. Acer Nagundo, I think it is. I'm not sure why I know that. But it's not terribly soft, not terribly hard, but it's a nice wood to work with. Pretty easy wood to work with. Now, I have a spear point scraper, which is in the Richard Raffin line of tools. And it is a dandy tool, but I never put it flat on the tool rest because you can get a real nasty catch with that. I've got a burr on it, and I've got it uh, angled up a little bit. And it's all a matter of finding the cutting edge on that burr. That's a little bit better angle right there. You can kind of see that. And I'm getting some nice shavings off that. And as long as I have a fairly uh, large burr on that tool, it'll cut pretty well. And I can just do some fine tuning on the shape of that. Working around the rim right there. But you can see how I have that tool angled upward. Now as I continue to work on my calabash, I'm going to apply a little bit of finish. Now this piece of wood is still a little bit wet. It's not uh, really too wet, but I'm putting some finish on there just to slow down the drying process. And you'll see me do this a little bit later as well. At the end of the video, I reverse this bowl in a jam chuck and finish off that base and remove that spigot. But right now I'm taking this off the screw. I'm going to remove the actual screw that's in this Vicmark chuck and remount my bowl and work on the inside. Now I think this Vicmark chuck is a very sturdy chuck and the two inch jaws work very well for this size of a bowl. I really like the shape. I think it came out very nicely. 
And as I mentioned, eventually I'm going to take that spigot off because I don't really like a foot on something like this. It should be a little bit more natural and organic. I'm taking my smaller bowl gouge and facing off the top of the bowl. I just think it makes more sense to start with a nice level surface as you're making entry cuts into this uh, project. Taking a narrow parting tool and defining the rim. I'm going to green turn this bowl. It's going to be finished uh, in one go. And I'm just marking where I want that rim to be. I'm going to set a measuring device for the depth. And I will keep that measurement throughout the project. And here I'm just taking a pencil and marking the very bottom of that. And I'll go back to that measuring device periodically. I'll try to show you the line here. The upcoming clip right here is my uh, bottom of the inside of the bowl. Eventually I want this bowl around a quarter of an inch thick. It'll warp a little bit, but hopefully it will not crack or split. And uh, I have pretty good luck with the burl. I believe burl wood behaves a little bit better. So I'm starting to hollow out the inside of that. I have a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. And from here on, I am really eliminating a lot of the footage. I spend quite a bit of time doing this. There's a lot of wood there. I'm just doing a push cut. And all I'm doing is removing some of the waste from the inside of this and working my way down. Now I must say as I proceed with my project that there's some really cool footage here of uh, removing wood from the inside of this bowl, like right here. Then, like I said, the wood is still fairly wet and it's a pleasure turning wet wood as opposed to a big old dry hunk of wood. It's all dusty. Now one thing you'll see me do here in the upcoming clips is work on the rim or the area right here below the rim while the very bottom of the bowl still has a large amount of mass still in it. I do this to reduce vibration and I just work my way down. So I'm going to finish this area right here before I take any more of that mass out below. And you'll see me as I proceed how, how I do this. And eventually I go to a negative rake scraper. And that works very well. That's a good shot of that tool in my hip. And I'm kind of moving at my knees. There's another good shot of that area I was talking about. I'm just very, very carefully removing wood and uh, approaching that thickness that I'm aiming for. Now here is my negative rake scraper and I've got that piece of leather backing up that bowl so it doesn't vibrate. One of my viewers came up with this idea about using a piece of leather and that works really really well. I've got a very nice burr on that, and you can see some of the shavings are just excellent. As I work my way down towards the center of the bottom of the bowl. Well, and there's a good shot of some of those shavings, which are indicative more of a cut than a scrape. Then I continue to work my way down 
toward the uh, curvature of the bottom of the bowl. And I'm checking my thickness, and I'm, I'm very close on the inside of that to that measuring device. I'm maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch from being to my final thickness. Now I'm taking a, a, a bowl gouge with a traditional grind. You know, Mike Mahoney would call this a bottom feeder. And I've got two or three of these tools, and they're really, really what you need for something like this, where that rim is going to interfere with your your bowl gouge. This is the same tool, only it's a smaller version. And I just work my way around that corner down there. And that's a difficult part of a project like this. It's uh, an area that uh, you sometimes leave a little bit on the thick side. Now, I've got all my my turning and my sanding completed on the inside. I I have done a little bit of the sanding, I should say. But since I'm in this position and I only have one shot at uh, sanding here, even though this bowl is wet, I do a little bit of sanding. And here I'm doing some wet sanding with some oil. And this is a good time to do this while your bowl is still in the chuck jaws. But a big reason for doing this is to help seal that wood a little bit and slow down that drying process. Now, I've got pictures uh, here and there in this video showing this uh, completed bowl, but I've also got it drying in a paper sack to make sure it doesn't dry out too quickly. Now right here I am forming a proper jam chuck, and the jam chuck I'm using is actually an identical bowl blank to the one I'm turning that I milled out of a large uh, box elder burl. So I'm just working on this jam chuck, going back and forth, uh, fine-tuning the fit. And I'm using a square end scraper right here to make that um, a very large tenon, if you will, as parallel sided as possible. I think this is a great project for practicing that jam chucking procedure. And I'm kind of working my way up to that. And I think right here I've got it. I just need to jam it on a little bit more. Knock it in with a tool very gently. Make sure I'm I'm bottoming out on that uh, shoulder on my jam chuck. But it's a good insurance policy to back up your, your jam chuck with some tape. You never can tell when you're going to get a catch and the tape is just going to prevent this bowl from flying across my shop. Back to my uh, smaller bowl gouge. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting pressure against the headstock or toward the headstock. I'm not going to do a push cut right now because that's uh, going against the axis. And I may throw this project uh, out of my jam chuck. Now I'm starting to do some draw cuts and eventually I'll go to a proper push cut and level off the surface and get a cleaner cut than I will with uh, either a scrape or that draw cut. So I'm doing a push cut on that area right there on the bottom of my bowl and I think I'm to the point where I need to do a little bit of scraping and I like this tool because it levels off that surface. It takes off any of those ridges left from the push cut from my bowl gouge. I've got a good burr on there and I am angling that tool because I don't want to get a catch with this spear point scraper. 
that could be a disaster. But I angle that tool and find the area where it's cutting. Now I'm going to an even safer tool, my negative rake scraper, and just uh, putting a very nice final finish on the bottom of my calabash bowl. Then I'll do some sanding, apply some finish, and we're going to be done with this in just a short while. I'm removing my tape. And with this jam chuck, I can put this bowl back on my lathe and take it off, and I'm checking the depth one more time to make sure I'm in the area that I want to be. So there's some of that sanding I was talking about, and uh, this is a great time to do it. It's a lot easier now than later on. And there is a picture of my final calabash outside my shop. Just knocking that jam chuck a little bit so that bowl vibrates off there. There we go. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a second right now before I put a finish on there to sign my work. And I like to do this with a pyography burner. Here we go. And I'm going to do a little bit of sanding with the drill, making uh, taking care that I don't eliminate my signature while I'm doing this. And I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, shellac right here, and I feel that's a good sealer. I can put about any finishes I want on top of that, and what I'll do is I'll put an oil on later. And here I'm just applying a little bit of wax. And I don't feel that wax is going to interfere eventually when I finish this bowl. I can really remove that wax with a little bit of paint thinner. But I will apply an oil finish. And there is my finished calabash sitting outside my shop. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.